A lot of the stuff I've been doing with this game recently has involved combining different levels together. So, for example, Stormy Ascent with a jetpack was everything from Stormy Ascent imported into Rocket. Sunset Vista with Baby T was everything from Sunset Vista imported into Aegipus Rex. And the Lost City Underwater, which I showed in my last miscellaneous modding video, was everything from the Lost City imported into either Under Pressure or Deep Trouble, I don't remember which. But all of those mods had a few issues. In the jetpack video, you can see that the collisions don't really work properly. And I had figured out how to fix that by the time I made the Baby T mod, but I still had to cheat a bit and teleport around the level to make Baby T actually spawn correctly. And I also had to teleport in the Lost City mod because that level is located much further back than the swimming levels are. and. There's no way to swim in or out of the screen. I have, since making that mod, figured out how to move the spawn point in any level really easily, but there are still problems with the walls and stuff pushing you in front of the level, so uh, you still need to teleport to get back to the right plane. And also, the lighting only worked in certain parts of that level because I've never worked out how to mod the lighting properly. I think you could overcome all of those issues if you could just find the relevant coordinates in the game files. I just haven't yet, so I don't really have much that I can do with that stuff at the moment, but there's still tons of other stuff you can do by mixing the files from different levels together. You can, as in those examples, use vehicles and mounts in levels you're not supposed to, or add in crates or enemies or hazards from other levels, or even potentially create entirely new levels from scratch by using assets from all over the game. I mean, the thing I made that was like the Bandicoot house that was emulating Twin Sanity a bit was actually just the pinstripe boss with loads of shit from other levels copied into it. So how have I actually been doing all this? Well, I've managed to make a very simple tool that can help you to do this kind of stuff because it is an absurd amount of work if you do it manually. So I'll post the thing that I've made on the warp room and I'll put a link to it in the description and I'll just give you a little demonstration so you can see the basics and then if you wanna go off and play with it, you can, or if you wanna hear me attempting to explain how this all actually works, you can stick around a bit longer for that. Please bear in mind, it is not a fully fledged application like what I'm trying to create with my level editor. It's just a simple tool with no error checking or anything like that. So it will just break if you don't use it the way I intended. I am planning to implement this stuff somehow into my level editor without the same limitations that there are at the moment. So it will be a bit more polished and functional by then, but for now, it's just like the texture converter thing that I made ages ago, which I also have a much better version of in the level editor, by the way. But um, it's just a shitty little thing that I made to make my life easier that I'm now sharing with anyone who wants to try it themselves. And in order to use it, you will also need Adventure T's NST Extractor, which I will link to in the description as well. See my last video if you want to know how that works. I'm not going to show the whole process again. Um, you'll also, this is quite important, need to run this program from the game folder. The executable needs to be alongside Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy.exe, just like the level selector that I made, because I wanted to make this as simple as possible. So when you open this thing, which you can see I've called the NST level combiner, you should see a list on either side of all the levels that you've used the extractor on. It looks a bit glitchy, but I'll fix all that for the proper version eventually. On the left, they're all split up into folders because this is where you choose which files you actually want to import and you can pick stuff from multiple levels. And on the right, there's just a list of levels that you can import those files into. 
There is a limit to the number of levels you're able to import stuff from with this thing because of the way it works at the moment. I know how to get rid of that limit. It should be pretty easy, but I just don't have time to work on this anymore right now. So there you go. And again, in order to see anything here, you need to have used the NST extractor on some level archives. I should be clear that a lot of imports that you might do with this will crash the game. You can't just use anything from any level in any other level. I guess there are sometimes a few conflicts between certain files that I haven't quite identified yet, but it's easy enough to just experiment and see what does work. So let's try something really simple first. Let's select the crates file from Jungle Rollers and import it into nsanity beach. And then to see what that looks like, you can click this button to launch the game to whichever level you currently have selected as the destination. As long as this program is in the same folder as the game, that should work. So here you go, you can see that floating just above the level here are the crates from the very beginning of Jungle Rollers. And if I check my crate counter here, you can see we're up from 49 to 87 total crates because the crates from the whole of Jungle Rollers have been added to this level, excluding the crates from the bonus round because those are in a separate file that I didn't include this time. You can import the bonus round as well if you want to add a bonus round to Insanity Beach, but if you do and you access it, this is what happens. That is an issue with collisions that I'll try to explain a bit later on. Now, most of these extra crates are going to be inaccessible because the layout of this level is completely different to the level that they came from, but you can reposition all of them however you want. I've already made an hour-long tutorial of how to do that, so I won't go over it again now, but if you'd rather wait for the level editor I keep talking about, then that will be coming at some point. It's just been delayed a bit while I've been learning how to utilise all these new ways to mod the game. It is worth noting that just like when you duplicate a crates file in a level to add extra crates, the crate counter and thus the gem requirement will automatically be recalculated based on any extra crates files you import. So in this level, the gem will only appear if I break every box from both crates files, all 87 of them. If you wanted to only use the crates from Jungle Rollers, then you could replace the Nsanity Beach crates file with an empty IGZ map file, such as, I believe, the level geo file from Insanity Beach, which has nothing in it. There's quite a lot of those empty files throughout these levels, so they're not too hard to find. But it's also important to understand that if you reposition all of these extra crates so that they fit within Insanity Beach's layout, they will also have changed position when you play Jungle Rollers. Once I have all of this working in the level editor, it should be easy to prevent that from happening, but for now, this is really just a tool to experiment with, so uh, there are ways around it by making copies and renaming files, but for now I'm just trying to cover the basics because that's all I really have time for at the moment. Also, everything I said in that level editing video about how sometimes adding extra crates can crash or break the level after you've beaten it, all of that applies to this stuff as well, so just be aware of that. So obviously you don't have to just stick to the crates as you saw with the bonus round and Jungle Rollers is a good example to start with actually because Jungle Rollers and Insanity Beach seem to be quite compatible with each other. So if you wanted to you could import the enemies from Jungle Rollers as well, you can import the Jungle Rollers from Jungle Rollers, you can import the gem platforms and modify their movement by messing with their coordinates, whatever you want. You can even import the Jungle Rollers art file, which will give you a level that looks like this. I can't really think of a reason why you might want such a complete combination of these two particular levels, but if you wanted to do stuff like use a vehicle in a platforming level or something like that, then you might want to import everything from one level into another. And you'll see why a bit later. But the problem here is that 
while the crates and the enemies and everything are solid and I can interact with them, all of this environmental stuff is purely visual. There are no collisions and if I try to jump up to the ground from Jungle Rollers, I'll just clip through it. Even if I include this static collision file when importing stuff, this ground still won't be solid. Obviously, this is, again, an issue with the collisions, but I think in order to show you a sort of workaround for that, I'm going to have to explain how this whole thing works. Before I do, I'm sure you've noticed this little drop-down menu here, labelled Main Level File. If I open this menu, the only option there at the moment is l 101 Ensanity Beach dot igs, because that is the main level file for Ensanity Beach, and that's the level I'm importing stuff into. Jungle Rollers has a similarly named file, which is also just the name of the level dot igz, and if I choose to import that as well as the other stuff, this will now give me a choice between Ensanity Beach and Jungle Rollers. Now, the effects of changing this will vary from level to level. Sometimes it will be as simple as just changing the location where you initially spawn. And as I said before, it's pretty easy to do that through other methods anyway. But sometimes if there's a vehicle involved, it will change whether or not you're actually using the vehicle. The way these levels have been put together is so incredibly inconsistent that you never really know what might happen until you try it. But it is often a good idea if you're doing this and switching the main level file to something else to also import the camera file from whichever level you're importing from because if you don't, you might be stuck with the camera pointing at the ground and not moving. So if I do all that with Jungle Rollers and Ensanity Beach, this is what happens when you load. Even though Crash still plays the animation he uses when he washes up on the beach, he's actually spawned at the coordinates where he spawns in Jungle Rollers, except he's fallen through the ground because it's not solid. If I walk through the level a bit, then you can see the whole of Ensanity Beach is still here underneath. And if I die, I'll respawn at the normal Ensanity Beach spawn point because the main Ensanity Beach file is still there. That's why the beach animation still played. It's just that the Jungle Rollers file was loaded before the Ensanity Beach file. As a side note, because Ensanity Beach and also Cortex Power spawn you in differently to any other level in the game using this animation, if you import either of their main level files into another level, you can get around the problem that we have with not spawning correctly when you set Crash 1 levels as Crash 3 levels, so you can actually use all of the Crash 3 superpowers in Crash 1 without having to cheat to respawn like I constantly had to do in my full playthrough. If you're going to do that, it is probably better to use Cortex Power because pretty much the only things in its main file are the doors from that level, which are easy enough to remove. Whereas l 101 Beach.igz for some reason, contains almost everything in the level, which is very uncommon. But that's a whole other barrel of bandicoots. Let's look at how this kind of modding works and what this program actually does. So the key to everything is these package files. Every single archive used in the game contains a packages folder like this, and somewhere inside it is an IGZ file named, whatever the archive is called, underscore pkg. These files are essentially just a list of file paths to every file contained in the archive, plus some extra code that tells the game what type of file each of them is, so they can be read correctly. By changing the files listed in these package files, we can change which files are loaded into a level when you play it. If you were to add a random model file or something to the list, then it wouldn't actually make any difference. Because even though that model will be loaded into the game when you play the level, you still need another kind of file to establish where and how that model should be used. So that's where these files come into play. These are the files from the maps folder for each level, and they are referred to internally as IGX entities files, and that's how they're categorized in these lists. These files are where all of the coordinates for everything in the level are contained, and I've shown how to edit those in previous videos. 
it is possible to just add one of these files to the file list of another level and nothing else, but there will be a lot of stuff missing if you do that. This is what Nsanity Beach looks like if you load in the Jungle Rollers crates file and nothing else. There's still a few crates here, but the TNT that's supposed to be right around here at the start is missing. That's because Nsanity Beach does not contain any TNT crates. The files associated with TNT crates are not present in the Insanity Beach archive and they're not listed in the Insanity Beach package file. So the game can't find them and the crates just won't load. So these IGX entities files work a bit differently to stuff like individual models or actors in that if you, for example, replace the model for a certain type of crate with some other model from another level, as long as the files for that model exist in the right location in the game files, it will load correctly. But for some reason, with the entities files, even though they specify the full path to every file they need to access, if you don't explicitly tell the game to load those files by including them in a package file, they won't load. Dance, little monkey! Dance! And actually, getting TNT crates to appear in Insanity Beach was the very first thing I tried when I first learned how these files worked. And I manually added in every single file necessary to make TNTs work into the Nsanity Beach package file and updated all the other code accordingly. And it was a very slow and painful process. It was very rewarding, I must admit, when it finally worked, but I thought I'd rather find a, a quicker way to do this. So what this level combiner actually does is create a new package file which lists every single file that is used in every single level you're importing from, excluding duplicates because having the same file path loaded twice will crash the game, and excluding any of the entities files that you haven't chosen to import. That means that no matter what you're trying to load into the level, the game will know where to find the files it needs. And then a reference to that new package file is added in the original package file for the level you're importing stuff into because that's easier and less messy than adding everything into the original and it means it only actually changes one file in the original or two if you choose to switch the main level files around but the original file is always backed up so you can restore it whenever you want by clicking this reset button. So when I import something into Nsanity Beach, the original package file is backed up and this new package file appears next to it. The reason why it's called Blaster Tech is because it seems that package files always need to share their name with one of the archives that already exists in the game. Blaster Tech is that unused rabbit character that I've shown before and it just happens to be the archive I picked when I first tested all this because I just know that it's not actually used in the game anywhere. And even if you are using that archive for something, doing this won't have any effect on the original Blaster Tech files because this isn't in the Blaster Tech packages folder. The location of this file is actually irrelevant as long as it's referenced correctly in the package file you're importing stuff into and as long as the file name matches an existing archive. The reason why I made it save in the same folder as the original package file that you're importing into is so that you can have a unique extra stuff file for every level if you want. So you can use the level combiner without ever worrying about the specifics of how these files work or where they're saved. And eventually when I figured out the best way to include all of this stuff as part of the level editor, it should be able to automatically do any of the things that you might want to manually do with it. But the reason why I'm showing you where these files are is mostly because of the problems we have with collision. So we've seen that the game gets almost all of its information about what to load into a level from that level's package file. But even though all of the files associated with collision have been imported from Jungle Rollers into Insanity Beach here, there's still no solid ground where there should be. Now, I don't fully understand how collisions work, but it seems that it doesn't matter how many collision files you import from other levels. The game will only ever load the one that is intended to be used with the level you're actually playing. I say only ever, but I did once manage to copy the collisions from Nsanity Beach into Toad Village and it stayed mostly intact, but 
I'm not sure how I did that exactly. And as I said, there's so much inconsistency between levels. I think that was just some kind of abnormality about Insanity Beach and it wouldn't work with other levels anyway. I'm sure there is a way to get collisions working properly. I'm sure there is a way to include collisions from multiple levels. But the only reliable method I've come up with so far for, in this example, making the Jungle Rollers ground solid instead of the End Sanity Beach ground is basically by replacing Jungle Rollers with this version of End Sanity Beach, which you can do by overwriting the Jungle Rollers package file with the End Sanity Beach package file once you've imported everything you want to import. And I think you do need to include the static collision file here if you wanna do that. And depending on what your aim is and what levels you're doing this with, you may want to switch the main file to match the level you're overwriting. I know here I want my main file to be jungle rollers because otherwise I'll spawn at the end sanity beach spawn point, which will no longer be solid and I'll just be stuck in an infinite death loop. So I don't really want that. So if I do that by just copying all of this and then pasting it over all of this, and then load Jungle Rollers, you'll see, well, it's Jungle Rollers, but everything from Insanity Beach is still here. All of the crates and the crabs and everything else, even the little intro cutscene and the cameras, everything except the collision, which is now letting me stand and run around on this ground correctly. But you may well be wondering, quite rightly, what the hell is the point in this? What's the difference between what I've done here and just importing the contents of Insanity Beach into Jungle Rollers? Well, if I reset both of these levels back to normal and try importing the Insanity Beach enemies file into Jungle Rollers and then load the game, it just crashes. Don't ask me why. I don't know why some things work and some things don't, but I guess there's some kind of incompatibility somewhere in the code that prevents it from working. But as we just saw, you can import everything from Jungle Rollers in its entirety into Insanity Beach and it'll load just fine. So that means that if you want to add crabs into Jungle Rollers and not just model swaps, but actual crab enemies like the ones used in Insanity Beach that behave the way they normally do, you would have to import everything from Jungle Rollers into Insanity Beach, overwrite the original version of Jungle Rollers with that modified version of Insanity Beach by replacing the package file, and then, if the crabs were the only thing you wanted to copy over, remove everything else from Insanity Beach by editing the package file or just replacing everything apart from the enemies file with an empty map file. Of course, using empty files would completely break the actual Insanity Beach, but hopefully when this is all part of the level editor, that won't be an issue. You won't always find that if you try importing something and it doesn't work, that reversing the direction of the import, like I've done here, will be any more successful. But it's always worth a try, I think. I had to do this exact thing with Baby T and Sunset Vista, for example, because importing the file containing Baby T from Egipus Rex into Sunset Vista crashes the game, but importing everything from Sunset Vista into Egipus Rex works. So exactly like I've done here, I did that and then replaced the original Sunset Vista with my modified version of Egipus Rex and removed everything from Egipus Rex except Baby T. And even then I still had to cheat to get Baby T to spawn properly because there seemed to be one coordinate for the egg, which I found, and a separate coordinate to actually spawn the egg in the first place, which I couldn't find, so it was pretty complicated. And also, you might run into other complications if you're messing with levels that have special character requirements, like the jet ski levels. It is possible to use the jet ski in platforming levels with working collisions and everything, and it is possible to sort of turn jet ski levels into platformers, but you'll also need to modify the chunk infos files and it's a bit of a nightmare, but just like everything else, it's stuff that I should be able to include in the level editor eventually. I just don't have any time to work on that at the moment, which is why I've released this as a separate thing. I definitely really didn't have any time to do any of this either, but I wanted to, so here we are. I do think I've probably talked for long enough now and I've got a lot of really important 
urgent stuff that I need to be doing right now. So I hope this was interesting or helpful to someone. I hope if you try experimenting with this stuff yourself that it works all right. I don't know when I'll next have the opportunity to really do anything with this game again or make any videos or work on the editor or anything like that. It depends how smoothly my imminent move to Australia goes and how long it takes me to get everything sorted out once I'm there because I doubt I'll have any time to do anything before then. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later.